Hello, what's going on? How's it hanging? How's it happen? Because you guys know exactly who it is. This is Kevin from the Card Progression Podcast. And it is Thursday. It is the 10th of February. And <laughs> this one, this podcast was full of just some of the best stuff you could possibly imagine. I'm not going to lie. And Jason from Audio Karate, my God, this was one fun conversation to have. You guys are going to enjoy it. But first, I want to thank our sponsors first, Phoenix Fitness. Yes, we are getting halfway through February. The winter months are here, but they are slowly, slowly, slowly coming to an end. Before you know it, spring and summer are going to be here. And, you know, if you're selling that New Year's resolution kick, you're going to want to keep lifting that pu- and iron, pumping the iron, yeah. Get strong like Arnold, yeah. So if you want to hit the gym, you're going to want to you know, lift the weights, do the calisthenics, do your cardio whatever it might be. And I mean, I I lift all the time. I'm always in the gym. So one thing I do know is the fact that, you know, you got to recover, right? You got to prepare right for this stuff. So that the next day when you go into the gym, your body is ready to roll. And when it comes to the supplement side of things, that's where Phoenix Fitness comes in. They have different supplements to help you uh, achieve your fitness goals and to help you recover and perform the best and prepare the best. They have different things like different pre-workouts, both, you know, stimulant and stimulant free. I use the stim free stuff because you guys don't have enough energy as it is. Uh, they have different beast of the recovery compounds to help you recover and absorb the nutrients better to help your muscles recover post-workout different proteins for your morning, nighttime, and directly after workout to help build up muscle, different creatine to help build muscle, different multivitamins, literally anything you need to help achieve your fitness goals. Phoenix fitness has for you. So our listeners get 15% off using the code M S O T D at FNXFit.com. Thank you. Phoenix fitness. Our second sponsor is custom debut so what does custom debuts do let me tell you what they do you want to be the coolest guy in the office coolest guy in the garage coolest guy and with the coolest rec room coolest piece of art on the wall go to custom debuts if you're especially if you're a music lover like me so this is what you do you go there you type in a band name and you can type in either an album from that band or a song from that band and they will make you a custom poster around the song maybe with lyrics kind of sprinkled in everywhere in a cool pe- pattern or they will take the album artwork for the album put on there, give the track listing in a cool way, and they will do it all in the way that you want it. If you're not satisfied with the first proof they send you in 48 hours, you can tell them what you want changed, what you want edited. And when you're fully satisfied, you can have another sent to you on normal poster paper, on a canvas print, or you can have an aluminum poster made. Now, how cool is that? Have the coolest, like, you know, Rise Against poster. Are you going to have a cooler Rise Against poster than me? Who knows? We'll see what happens. But our listeners get 10% using the code CPP10 at Custom Debut's website. Links in the description below. So on this podcast today, I have Jason from the band Audio Karate. Their latest song, Lovely Residence, is out now. They have a brand new album called Ultra coming out on March 18th, 2022. They have, you know, unreleased material from some of their previous works. They have new material on there as well. And on this podcast, what do we talk about? We talk about, you know, the the band. We talk about the music. We talk about the fact that, you know, this band, a lot of people are, you know, picking up back on them again because especially with the wave of nostalgia from the pop punk emo days, you know, how just people are picking up on them and just be like, oh my God, I remember these guys. Cause you listen to Nintendo 89, you're going to remember these guys. And we talk about a lot of just great stuff all along the way. One of my favorite conversations I've had, and I know you're going to like it as well. So please welcome Jason from the band Audio Karate. Are you guys ready? Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Chord Progression Podcast. Yet again, you guys know me. I love bringing you great music from all over the place. And this one, not going to lie, is absolutely no different. So this band is a brand name called Otra coming out on March 18th of 2022. So it's coming out pretty soon. Their latest single from the album, Love Res- well, Love Res- Lovely Residence. I almost said Love Resistance. My God, there's me already messing up. Lovely Residence is out now for you to check out. So please welcome Jason from the band audio karate so jason welcome to core progression podcast thank you so much for having me excited thanks for being on man how's everything going in your world now that you know we're in we're you know pretty much a month into 2022 you know kind of getting our feet you know basically footing for this year how's it been going on your end things have been going well um happy to finally get the record going out i mean we've had this thing mastered and done since god early 2020 and we hooked up with, with Casey and Iodine. It's like, yeah, we're going to put it out. And then the delays turn into delays. And uh, it's hard to sit on something that you're done and you're excited about, but you can't tell anyone, right? 
and you see other people releasing records and singles you're like dude i want to do this so bad and it's like well you don't want to announce super early and then pre-sale and people wait nine months and they hate you because they don't get their record it's not your fault so uh we're, we're excited i can totally understand where the delays would come in because especially you know once the pandemic hit in 2020 it was something where i saw a lot of music just get push back and push back further and even still going on today with supply chain issues with a lot of people that are getting you know vinyl prints and stuff it's those vinyl prints are being heavily delayed by a couple months so releases have been pushed back after they've been announced a couple of months because of those delays so you know i understand where the frustration comes in from those delays but it makes sure that once the album is ready to come out and ready to roll that all the materials for people that are ordering this album to getting the physical copies of it everything is set and ready to go for that release day. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm, I'm stoked that some people are into pre-sales. I'm not personally, like I give someone money. I want that shit on my porch three days later, you know? Uh, but we're, we're super happy. The response has been really good. We've sold out of a couple of the variants and the, the support that our fans continue to give us is, is huge. And we're so appreciative of it. Say, I would assume you ha you'd be appreciative of it, especially, you know, you've got a couple of vinyl variants that have already sold out for this. And I mean, once that album ends up dropping, because if I'm correct, when I read about this album, it's a collection of a lot of rare and unreleased material that spans the history of the whole entire band. So this isn't something that is, you know, particularly brand new, but it's something that really shows the evolution of the, of the band from its beginning to now. Yes. So half the songs, there's eight songs on the LP. Uh, half of them have been released uh, they were B-sides from either our first record, Space Camp, or our second, Lady Melody, or our third, uh, Malo. But uh, they've never been on vinyl. So half of them, first time on vinyl. The other half, no one's ever heard before. Um, like, Love You Residence was one of those. And that stuff's fun. Um, collection records, like some of them, production values aside, I think one can hear like, okay, this is clearly older stuff. But uh, I'm really happy that if we didn't mention anything, I think some a listener would have a hard time figuring out like, was this recorded older than the other stuff, newer? Like there's there's consistency in a common thread. I think we could have totally passed this as like, hey, this is just a new record that we recorded in 2019 or whatever. And I don't think anyone would have been the wiser. One thing I do have to add in there that I think is a cool move by you guys is, yeah, you know, you're adding a couple of these B-side tracks to it, but it's, you know, half of it is stuff that people are going to be listening to that they might have listened on the B-side tracks of things, but are getting, you know, fresh right now. And then half it being brand new stuff, because there have been times I've seen bands that have done something somewhere. It's like, oh, we're going to release some B-side stuff. And it's something, you know, a lot of people have already listened to, have already uh, known. And then it just kind of seems like, oh, it was an album that was just, you know, it was kind of cool to have this all put together finally, but we've already heard this stuff, especially with the internet nowadays, you know, good looking back 10, 15 years ago, I mean, MP3s, you could download these songs, you could buy these songs. Now with streaming, you can find them pretty much anywhere, but having it be a half and half thing where you're giving new material to people, that's going to be something that's going to add even more to it because people get to see, you know, part of the evolution of the band from the beginning to where you guys are now. And they get a whole half of brand new stuff to show, you know, the next chapter for Audio Karate. Yeah, no, we're, we're super stoked on that, man. It's um, it's cool. It's definitely good stuff for the completest and for the people who've never heard us before. I think it's a good sampling of like, hey, if you think this doesn't suck, you should check out the other records. There's There's a lot more where it came from. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, going through, like, your Spotify listings, I was going through it while preparing for this podcast. And, of course, right now the number one song, like, on the top, like, the top listing for both Papa songs is Nintendo 89. I'm like, wait a minute. That song, like, the title sounds familiar to me. So I popped it, like, played it. Well, this one, I'm thinking, wait a minute. This definitely sounds familiar. I'm like, I don't know. Remember, I can't remember exactly where I heard it before. I don't know where it is. But for some reason, the melody of that song has been stuck in my head for probably 15 years i don't know where it came from but it's stuck in there somewhere i'm like holy crap i finally found the song yeah so that's yeah that was warp tour 2003 it was on that comp and that was probably uh the most prominent place but yeah i was in kind of every comp of that era i mean we we caught the tail end of the golden era of comps where you had three four bucks you're like screw it i'm gonna get 45 bands like th this is cool um so that that one had a lot of legs that's the song where we play live and you go from seeing blank faces of like okay fuck when's the headliner coming on like we don't care so we play that song like oh these are those dudes i love this song like yeah and it totally changes the dynamic which is uh which is fun 
not gonna lie, if I saw you guys live, you know, without really being able to go through a conversation like this, that probably would have been my same reaction. I've been like, you know, I'm feeling it, I'm having fun with it, but there's just something that I'm not clicking with because, you know, some of these songs I might not necessarily know very well. All of a sudden that one plays and all of a sudden it's like, you get that moment of like, oh, it's these guys. No freaking way. And then all of a sudden everyone in the crowd is having just this absolute blast. And then, you know, if that's the last song you play, you know, say goodnight, everybody. And then everyone has their mind. Shoot, I remember that song. That's all your karate. Now I got to go check out more of their stuff. I got to remember more of their stuff because if that was the band that had that and now I got to look like, you know, what their whole entire set was again, listen to that, listen to everything else they got and really get into the band just based off of something like that. So being able to play something like that live and just have that moment of just, you know, oh, you know, I'm feeling it, but you know, I'm not necessarily sure what's going on all of a sudden. Whoa. Now I know what this is from. Having that moment of connection just brings fans back into it and just brings people into, you know, having that moment in time where. They go home at night, they go to work the next day, they're talking to their friends the next day, and they're talking about that moment with you guys where all of a sudden they played the song that I remember from, you know, 2003, 2004, and I'm like, oh my God, I now found it. I now know who did, who put the song out there. This is awesome. Yeah, they, you get people going, oh shit, I thought that was Alistair all this time or something. <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, it's cool. I'm really, that's... God, these days, that's sort of the focus. Like, I don't know if the 18 or 19 year old kind of new school pop punk emo fan is really looking to latch onto a band like an audio karate. Um, it's more getting those people like 30 to 40 who went to Warp Tour and, you know, have seen all those bands of that era a hundred million times and they weren't going to necessarily back then spend the 15 bucks to get the CD. But now that music's free, I hope they all go back and go like, Oh, I'm a big NFG fan or big Bayside fan. I remember hearing about that audio karate band and then going like, Oh shit, how did I miss this for 20 years? Like this is totally up my alley. We're really looking to fill in those blanks. Um, I had done the Mike Herrera podcast and that was one thing he brought up. He's like, dude, how did I miss this? Like, how did we not intersect? Cause this is, totally up my alley like i love this shit and we're like yeah that's that's all we're trying to do like if we can fill in all those blanks of people of a certain age who are into that era of, of pop punk and kind of emo kind of post hardcore stuff um that's sort of the biggest aim we've got with it i mean we've all got families and day jobs and all that so i, I don't think we're gonna get signed to epitaph and tour 300 <laughs> days a year anytime soon and that's totally cool I mean, would you want to tour 300 days out of the year, especially with having having a family right now? No, dude, I, I couldn't imagine that. We do, um, I mean, before the pandemic hit, we were doing kind of three-day weekend warrior stuff a couple times a year and some festivals and all that. And by the end of it, like we had, we were just fucked up. We had like flu symptoms. <laughs> we were just so burned out. And the running theme was like, how did we do this? Like 300 days a year, drunk the entire time like it made no sense that we were ever able to do that it's like oh wait we weren't pushing 40 like <laughs> a little easier when you're a 21 year old kid yeah and you feel like you're absolutely invincible on top of the world and nothing's gonna stop you where you can feel like you know you can maybe like stage dive go crowd surfing people can drop in your head and then the next day it's like oh i'm a little sore no big deal yeah did i have bell pepper dude i have heartburn today like what's <laughs> going on like we're talking about aches and pains versus uh what we want to do with the rest of our lives. Like that's the running theme in the van now. It's like, Oh dude, like, what do you take for that? Oh, do you have that? Oh yeah. I'm starting to get high blood pressure. Doctor thinks I should do this. It's like, damn, we suck so hard. Well, I mean, there's a couple of things I do want to touch on that as well. And one is, you know, you're talking about just how, instead of just going with, you know, what are the crazy stories you're talking about? It's, you know, Oh man, what gave me heartburn? Cause I mean, those conversations are being had as you get older, but take a look at the band Bowling for a Soup that came with the song, you know, Getting Old Sucks, but everybody's doing it because a lot of the bands that a lot of us liked from that era of pop punk emo post hardcore early mid 2000s, it's those bands, you know, guys are pushing, you know, 40, guys are getting in their late 40s, even 50s as well. So you're definitely seeing some of that. However, with the release of Ultra and just kind of like really being able to have these delays actually kind of potentially worked out rather well especially given the release of the when we were young fest and then recently right before we uh shot this the release of this you know the emo's not dead cruise festival that has like under oath dashboard confessionals a part of that as well uh ryan from yellow card is a part of it it's just like you know the whole entire thing of it is 
you're starting to see the resurgence of this once again, especially in people in you know their early 20s, late 20s, 30s as well, because we listen to all this stuff and now it's, you know, we're starting to see this, you know, get back to prominence in some sort of a nostalgia way, but it's still stuff, you know, we have the money to actually go out and do this stuff. We actually have the money to go out and spend to go out to uh, when we were young fest and potentially potentially spend 200 bucks to go and see as many of our favorite bands as we want. Go on an emo's not dead cruise and see all this stuff. So the potential for this release and all of a sudden people being able to pick up on that sound once again, explore it and also all of a sudden find out more about audio crowd and be like, Oh my God, I remember this band and have that moment. It might actually be the perfect storm for you guys to release something like this to capitalize on that. Yeah, it's, um, it's cool. It's definitely a paradigm shift because we hadn't done it for so long that, uh, we just finished putting together the details for our record release show. And it's like a $20 ticket. And I remember, you know, old school thinking of me is like, oh, my God, we can't charge $20. And then I think like, no, man, like I know people who they'll pay $20 for a single cocktail if it's something they really like and are into. And um, it's cool to be in that sort of demographic now where, yeah, 300, 400 bucks to go see a festival you really like. If you know, there's there's tons of people that are into it that have the means to do that. Uh, through Instagram and, and social media, we we follow a lot of people who are fans and who've been friends now for 20 plus years. And some of them, it's like, oh, my God, dude, like you really made it like you're a business owner and you're a freaking doctor. Like, yeah, you could buy 10 copies of the record. You're like, this is awesome. Uh, it's, it's not a bunch of 16 year old kids who are like saving lunch money and they maybe have enough cash to go to one show a month or something. Right. Um, that that That's pretty cool. I'd like to play on the cruise. That would have been really fun. But then again, like, I don't know, the thought of hitting an iceberg and that's how you went out is, I don't know, kind of weird. I but, mean, if you, I'll say if you did the Emo's Not Dead cruise, I doubt you'd hit an iceberg because it's going from Southern California to Mexico. I don't really think there's an iceberg in those waters at that point. Sharks. No, dude, there's sharks. There's the cartels. Like, there's a lot of bad stuff that could <laughs> happen. But uh, you would think, like, uh having a a show that goes down to mexico they would want audio karate on there i mean we're all all mexican american but it's cool we'll do the next one i can definitely see now um where acts can get like residencies in vegas where growing up like why would anyone want to go see someone in vegas that's like 20 years past their prime for lack of better words but i could totally see like jimmy world and dashboard getting a residency in Vegas, like I'd go make a weekend of that. And, you know, Hey, we're doing 20 nights in Vegas. I could totally see people go into that. I think the, when we were young fest kind of capitalizes on like, it puts a point on people will absolutely throw a lot of money at this because they love it. They're just as into it as they ever were. And uh, no, it, it's, it's a cool time to be around and to still be relevant and still have people care. Totally cool. I do have to agree with what you said about the Las Vegas residency as well, because even for someone like myself, where, you know, a lot of the bands that I like, it's like some of them, you know, are definitely, you know, from that era of like the early to mid 2000s. But there's a lot of them that are really, you know, current, really upcoming now. But I think about some of the like the older ones I like. And if they, if all of a sudden, you know, they did a whole entire residency thing, like 20, 30 shows out in Vegas. I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden I were to jump in on that and be like, hey, you know, I'll go out there. Oh, you're playing, you know, two shows on this weekend. Yeah, I might go to both because if I like the band enough, I will easily go to both and make a whole weekend out of it. Why? Why wouldn't I do something like that? Hell, I travel all the time for shows and like, I'll t oh, 20 bucks to go to the show. That's, you know, two hours away. Yeah, I'm going to go do it. Or if even it's like 60, 80 bucks to go to a show, if I want to go and do it. Hell, I know I, I'm not, you know, scraping lunch money and trying to figure out how I'm going to get down there. It's no, if I want to go, I have the money. I can get down there myself. I could make this happen one way or another. And there's a lot of people that have that same mentality as well, where if you want to go out and do something like this, the fans are going to because they have such a positive connection to the music. So you're seeing that happen with the When We Were Young Fest and you're starting to see some stuff with other festivals pop up now. And even some of these larger tours where it's, you know, they're starting to be spaced out a bit more in certain cities. But people are traveling to these cities because they're like, fuck it. I want to go see this show. I'm going to be there. I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. Hey, let's get together a crew of four or five people. We'll get an Airbnb. We'll make we'll make a destination and a weekend of it. Um, we've had the good fortune to do Fest uh, a couple times now since we've reunited. 
And yeah, the number of people that I know from like, oh, dude, you're here from Philly or from Texas. Like, damn, that's cool. And there's 70 bands playing and you picked Audio Karate. Like, that's cool, man. Thanks. Uh, it's always flattering and, and really cool that people have a, a billion choices now, right? And I think streaming and the internet, um, there, there's a, a you could you could throw your time and energy at a billion things. So the fact that people have the world's history of music at their fingertips and they're still listening to audio karate and, and carving out time and it's important to them. So cool. Su su super flattering. And um, we, we really appreciate that. Are you guys planning on playing some other like festivals potentially in 2022? We are, we can't, uh, we can't say when and where just yet. Cause you know, you got to have the big rush and all that, but uh yeah, I'm, I'm thinking fans will be happy and, and we're going to be visiting some uh, some regions outside the West Coast this year. So we're super stoked. Oh, boy, I'd say that's all I needed to know, because I, I know, you know, with things that are working behind the scenes, you can't really say anything. So I'm not going to push you to say anything. But the fact that you're probably you're going to be playing some festivals now, I mean, even for myself, I love perusing some of these things. So I'm going to be constantly looking at different festival lineups as I've been pretty much ever since they've been dropping this whole entire you know month. I'm like, oh. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on here. What can I potentially make? What do I want to do? And yeah, you know, my, you know, there's going to be some travel time and there's going to be some expense in there. And there's a lot of people, a lot of fans that think the same way I do. But, you know, if this is what we like, if this is what we really want to spend our money and really spend our time doing, because this is the positivity of life that we get from going to see bands like Audio Karate Play Live or any other band that's going to be on that bill for these festivals. Yeah, we're going to go there and we're going to make sure when that set starts that we're going to be in the crowd for it. So when you guys go out on stage, it's like, how you doing? Name of the festival. And everyone's just like, yeah. And then you guys start playing. Everyone's like, yeah, it's all worth it for a lot of fans, especially, you know, coming from one myself. <laughs> Oh, dude, thank you. Um, shit, the biggest thing for festivals for us is once these lineups get announced, because we don't really know, right? Um, half the time I'm like, dude, they're playing like, cool. I get to get, I get to be paid to travel, to go watch a bunch of bands that I want to see anyway. Like I'd probably go to this festival anyhow. And now I get to sort of subsidize this uh, vacation and get to watch all these bands. Um, super, super cool, man. I'm, I'm jazzed it's it's a good it's a good time and i feel like uh people really need it you it's like we take for granted shows but when there were no shows for that period it's like fuck this kind of sucks we did a show in august of uh, last year with descendants and that was our first show back and we opened it up and it was big room in san diego and and sold out crowd and art's like Hey, how many of you, is this your first show back? And like every hand shot up and it's like, fuck, we're the first band these people get to see. And they tore it up. Like it was super, super cool. Cause everyone was just so pent up. Um, it, it's a good time to come back and it's, it's a necessary time. Right. So oh, yeah. I would say absolutely it is because even when all of a sudden I started going back to shows in 2021, it was something where just going back there, it felt at first it felt a little odd just because of how long it had been since I'd been to a live show. And all of a sudden the music starts and it's just starting to get, you know, into the crowd once again, starting to feel the energy of the crowd, the camaraderie in the crowd of getting to know people that I've never seen before in my entire life. All of a sudden it's just the positively started rolling, having a great time, singing along with some of these songs. Then I go to the next one and it's a lot heavier. There's going to be a mosh pit. I'm just like, yeah, let's go. And just seeing people go absolutely crazy in, in a pit. I'm just like, <gasps> This is, this is exactly what I missed. And then just once I got that feeling back, once again, I mean, I know a lot of fans feel this way too. So the fact that you were the first band for a lot of people, for a good amount of people that they saw post, you know, the shutdown and post uh, postponement of tours and live shows, there's just something there that people are just going to have this idea and this remembrance of that first show. They're going to remember you guys for, and remember the positivity that they got from it, that they'd been missing for over a year and a half. Yeah, no, that it, it was super cool. I mean, it was memorable for us, so I can't imagine it wasn't for for all those folks. Um, but we're we're stoked. We've already booked uh, two shows and a festival, and we've got some other offers coming in, and we've got a new booking agent, and uh, yeah, we'll be doing stuff. Where where are you at, man? I see you got a Brewer shirt. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay, huh? 
Okay, that's probably not super high on the list of spots we're going, but uh, we'll, we'll be within Stone's throw of you, I'm, I'm sure, before the end of the year. Well, I'll put it this way. For me, when it comes to shows, if it's during a weekday, like just any day during the week, I will have no problem traveling two hours to a show and, and then, you know, two hours back as long as I have like a day or two to figure out how I'm going to get there. And that could be, you know, I love the shows in Milwaukee, but if there's a show in Madison, Wisconsin, and Green Bay, Wisconsin, or down in Chicago, I'm there. If I want to see it, I'm making it happen. No excuses. Yeah, we've, it's weird, man. We've never been to Chicago, and I don't know how that happened. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, dude. Uh, all our touring years, it just never came up. And you get so much more information now as a band, like with, with your Spotify and your Apple breakdowns. And it tells you like what cities you have the most listeners in and most plays per song. And outside of Los Angeles, which is where we're from and is like, you know, a, a huge city, Chicago is number two consistently. And I'm like, why the, like, how the hell? Um, the guys in my band, had a side project when, when I stopped doing music called Indian school, where it's basically audio karate minus me. And they did riot fest in like 2011. And they're like, dude, we don't know why, but Denver was like, okay. And then Chicago just fucking killed it. Like, I, I don't know why. So anyone from Chicago that's listening to this, like we want to come and uh, I'm, I'm dude, I'm totally curious. It's one of those things like, Hey, I know we've never been there. We should go headline a show there. And the guys are like, dude, we're going to headline and 12 people are going to show up. I'm like, no, no, I've got the feeling like it's going to be bizarre, but like, if we go, the people will come. Um, I'll probably be proven wrong on that theory, but uh, that's Chicago's definitely on our, our plan of places to visit this year before it gets cold. Cause we're delicate little things. Oh, I, I totally understand that because there was one show I was supposed to go to in January in Chicago. The show got canceled the day beforehand, and but the night that, that show was supposed to happen, I mean, it was going to be below zero, and I had to try and I was going to have to try and find my way down there, taking a train down there and back to get to my car, and it was going to be like you know maybe twenty minutes just to make that happen. After being in a mosh pit and like all of a sudden having to walk out there in negative temperatures, yes, that doesn't seem like the best idea. I still would have done it though, but I can see where you're coming from. Another thing I've heard consistently with a lot of the bands I've had on the podcast, and they come from so many different uh, like genres between rock and metal, emo, pop punk, post hardcore, you know, just straight hard rock music, metal, heavy metal, deathcore, metalcore. It's always you look at the Spotify listener, like you know the stats because you know, even I can see like the top five uh, you know places that are listening to it. Chicago is consistently on that list, and if they're not like you know below the hometown, they're usually number one at that point. Then. And you go to Chicago, trust me on this, it's just the way that the the mindset is around that city, especially around the music scene. But just like the rock and metal scene, it is still really, really, really strong there. So you go play a show, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I might get like, you know, 12, 13 people, you might be thinking that. No, no, no. I would not be surprised if all of a sudden you do a, you know, do a smaller venue, you could pack 100, 150 in there of us going absolutely crazy for Audio Karate. All right, dude, I'm going to hold you to it. We'll, we'll save you a, a hoodie. Um, well, yeah. let me put it this way. 99 to 149 because I will be one already there. So you can already, you know, take care of that. <laughs> we'll, we'll comp one for sure. Uh, <laughs> ah, man, we're, we're stoked. It's, it's interesting being able to do things with, you know, like I said, with so much more information because 20 years ago, blind, dude. Hey, we're going these places. Have we ever been there? No, we should be okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then some shows were really good. Um, and you can never really predict, but you had so much less information and feedback and it wasn't like, Oh, you announce a show. Like we announced our show. Uh, we're doing the record release March 19th at the Paramount in LA. So we do a post and we tag, uh, you know, the other bands are playing and you get immediate feedback of like, Oh, that did 20% better than every other post we've done this month. Clearly people want to go to the show. And you have people saying, oh, can't wait to fucking be there. This is going to be awesome. Oh, you're playing with Go Betty Go. I love Go Betty Go. Like, I'll see you guys there. And then you get to look at, there's so much more information. Whereas before it was like, hey, I think the promoter's cool. They uh, they said they did a lot of posters. How's the pre-sale? Seven people. Fuck. Okay. Um, and then you get there and, it, and it's fine. But you were, you were driving so blind. Um, you, I'm spoiled to it. But it was also kind of nice having sort of the, the surprise of like, we have no clue how this will work out. 
um, you get almost paralyzed by it where we got a group thread with the band and it's like, Hey, how, how are the numbers on this? I'm like, oh, I don't know, dude. Like I could look at this shit all day. So I have to kind of remind myself to put it down and not get so, um, so wrapped up in it. Right. Like it's not money ball. Like we can't just analyze this shit to make it happen. Like people care. It resonates with people. Um, the, it'll be fine. And even if it's, you know, half the people that we may be anticipated, I'd rather have half the people who absolutely want to be there and are so stoked and it means something to them than a packed room of people who are indifferent. Right. Um, we've all been to those shows where like you love the opener and you're singing every, and at some point you're like self-conscious cause you're like, dude, how does no one get that? This is like the greatest shit. Um, yeah, I, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we, you have to be mindful to almost take a break from it. Right. Cause the algorithm could tell you a lot. It can't tell you everything. It certainly can't quantify people's passions, I guess. Yeah. There's no algorithm in the world that can really quantify emotions because emotions shift on so many different paradigms. It can shift almost instantly. And when it comes to that, there's really no like numeric value that you can put on that. And there's no real mathematical thing you can put on that as well. On top of that, I do totally agree with you where it's a lot better to have, you know, a, sh a show that might be only half full, but everyone is so like intently into the show instead of a room full that's indifferent because you get a room that's full, it's indifferent. Yeah, it's nice to ha have it full. It's nice to see those numbers, but the energy of the show just isn't necessarily there. All of a sudden, you get you know half the people in there that are just going absolutely nuts, singing every word to every song, and all of a sudden, you're seeing the crowd just go absolutely crazy. You're seeing bodies flying as crowd surfers go all, all over the place, and we feed off that energy, and then all of a sudden, you guys are feeding off that energy to the point where that show is just one where we remember it absolutely forever. And I do understand what you're talking about too, where, you know, sometimes you get those openers on there that are really good and we know they're really good, but it's like the crowd might be indifferent to it. You're sitting there like, come on guys, what's going on? Like, <laughs> yeah. this is awesome. I, I've, I've seen that happen with a bunch of bands. Like I've gone out and seen in 2021 that I've had in the podcast have opened for some bigger bands. I'm just like, come on, you know, this is some good stuff. There's been a good number of times where I've gotten people really into it as well. And there's sometimes where people are like, uh, maybe not this one. I'm just like, oh man, I'm not doing my job right then. You see him shuffle like three feet away from you. Like this guy's weird. I'm going to move. Why is he so into this? Um, no, the, the shows will be fun though, dude. I, I can't wait. I live out of state now from the rest of the guys. So this, these are sort of the only times I get to see my best friends too. Um, so in that regard, like the shows are, are cathartic and really fun for, for me. Cause I fucking love those guys, right? I miss them. Um, and a lot of the songs on Otra, like, uh, God, there's a song on there, Do You Miss Meaning Everything to Me? Very sappy emo title. Um, that song, like, we wrote when we were 17, 18 years old. I'm 39 now. Like, so one, I got to relearn this song that we wrote 20 plus years ago. But uh, you start playing them and you get sort of that mental, like, picture video reel in your head of like oh i remember that time we played it i got in a fight after that show that was cool oh yeah he wrote that song about that one chick yeah she was kind of weird uh, <laughs> uh that that kind of stuff it's music such a good time machine right you remember where you were the first time you heard a band and uh how, how that happened um it's not lost on me that because we are sort of a I don't know. What's the word? Like, what would you use for, it's not like a nostalgia act, but you know, like a, a an older band where it's kind of not lost on me that people had like their first kisses to an audio to Nintendo 89 or something. So when we play that, like people flash back to like, Oh, I was so in love with that guy. Oh, he is a jerk. Like I've been happily married for 15 years. <laughs> now. I was so young and dumb. Right. Or, or something like that. Like to be a part of people's lives in that way. And I know how big of a deal music is for me and how much I associate eras of my life with certain records and times and sort of the best of times and worst of times, right? Like you find out a family member dies, you're singing in your car, listening to music, crying, like those songs hit different forever. And um, knowing that our, our music is, is parts of people's lives in that way is, it's kind of cool. 
I mean, not to get like too heady and weird on it, but it's, I think, a, a thought worth having. It absolutely is a thought worth having because as a musician and even as a music lover yourself, like you have those songs and you have those different moments in music where you listen and nostalgia is, is a word that can be used for, but it is not the correct, like the best word for it because <laughs> nostalgia really just only puts a moment on like, you know, it's, it's more of a broad feeling. And like when you listen to certain songs that you have a strong emotional connection to, it's you can remember the moment when, you know, you listen to it when it meant the absolute most to you and how it helped you through. Cause even myself, like there's a couple of songs, like I'll listen to, I remember the first time I ever listened to savior by rise against and remember the most important time I ever listened to that song. I remember the first time I ever heard eternally yours by motionless and white and how it just basically stunned me. I remember the day, like I could tell you the day it happened too, or you just talk about, you know, if someone close to you passing on and all of a sudden, you know, you're in your car, you're listening to a song and you're, you know, you're getting emotional about thinking about that person and it just adds so much more weight to that song. It just adds so much more remembrance to it. And for myself, like I just went through something like that because my grandfather died at the end of December. And I, the day that he, the day that he passed, I was driving home from the gym and I was listening to "From the First Note" by We Came as Romans. And it just every time I listen to that song, you know, I just think of my grandpa and think about all the great times I had with him over the course of 27 years. And it just adds so much more positivity. It just adds this, you know, incredible positive remembrance from the past it's not nostalgic because nostalgic is way too broad for because now you're dealing with something that's super specific and i think the honestly the best quote i've ever heard about this is art decorates space but music decorates time because you listen to those songs and you're able to just have that time machine moment to go back in time and remember the emotions that you had around that song at the time you listened to it or at the most important time that you listened to it it's a total time machine, dude. Um, I, I think that's such a good way to put it. Uh, it's an instant time machine. Um, Otra has a track, So Lovely Residence, um, feature, features Emily Whitehurst. And she used to sing in a band called Tsunami Bomb. Um, they've, they've since reunited. Yeah, so we were on the same label. And God, we did at least 50, I want to say about a hundred shows with Tsunami Bomb, um, US, the UK, Europe, uh, Japan. And like, I turned 21 in Tokyo, we did a show with them. So we were like bros. Um, so we do lovely residents and the song was cool. I'm like, this needs something. Hey, let's hit up M. I wonder if she would sing on it. It's like, that's a stupid idea. It's like, fuck it, dude. We have nothing to lose. Right? Like, we, we self-produce our music now. We put it out. Uh, we're fortunate that we've got friends that own record labels where unless it's absolute garbage, they're like, dude, you guys, whatever you want to put out, you've got a home, which is huge, right? Like we owe Iodine and, and Wiretap and, and some of these labels, such a debt of gratitude. But uh, Emily sang on it. And I know for us, like I listen to that song and I don't really like listening to our music, but I like that song a lot because M's on it uh it's a time machine thing like her voice is it's an instant time machine to that era and to those shows and to how much buffoonery we would get into like we were such jerks to tour with so yeah tsunami bomb m dom gabe like all you guys dude sorry we were just the biggest jerks to tour with not in like a a negative way but like just just dicks (laughs) for lack of better word man i mean we're, we're friends and family but like why were we so stupid? Like, um, good time, good time machine though. And we share a lot of fans. So I think that's a a cool sort of niche. Plus I don't think there's enough duets in sort of the the punk rock universe. Like I could think of maybe a a couple that come to mind, but we want this to sort of be the, my endless love, or I had the time of my life or something, uh, for, for pop punk fans. Honestly, I do have to agree with you on that because listening through the song, because I mean, I've got notes on the song. I got to look them up right now because I've got them on a different screen. When I was looking at the song, I mean, one thing I always do when I dive deep into a song is first thing I do is I take a look at what I can try and find out from the meaning of the song. So I'll listen to it, try and find the lyrics. If I can't find the lyrics, just listen as intently as possible I can to the words, try and get an understanding of where the song is coming from. And it did have this feeling of like, you know, there's something that has ended. And whenever I kind of, for me personally, I always end up relating to more relationships because of the stuff that I've been through in life, but that's just more me getting personal with it. And, but that's how, you know, people connect with music. It's, we're going to have the same core to, you know, the, the message of the song, 
but how we relate to it in specifics is different based off of what we went through. So I kind of took of it as like, you know, maybe like the end of a relationship, but you're looking back at it in the positive because we listen to the chorus, like in the first half, it says, you know, it's your heart I'm going to miss. And this lovely residence, it's like, that makes us as a listener feel like, you know, you're looking fondly back on the past, looking back on the relationship or like with you looking back, back, like back on touring with tsunami bomb. And, you know, yeah, you know, that time has come to that. It's no longer here anymore. The time has run its course. And you're going to miss those good times as well. And it's going to be comforting, you know, going back and remembering those good times because of potentially, you know, from your end, the friends you made along the way. And from the end that I took on with more of a relationship end, just the positivity you felt and the happiness you felt with that person, how you grew in terms of the, with your emotions, everything like that. And then you get to the parts like, uh, uh, was it I ask you why I should rest when I'm not even dead? It kind of points out of moving forward and not dwelling on that past too much. So, Focusing on the positivity of it, but not being so stuck in it. You had good times, but don't rest and dwell on them too much and miss out on the rest of life that you have going forward. Yeah, I think that's uh, a a good assessment of it. I think it's sound advice. Um, There are certainly some good times that you shouldn't revisit, right? I'm I'm happy Audio Karate isn't that for us where, okay, hey, we're doing this again. Uh, We've done it. Maybe this was just better left in the past. Like this kind of sucks. Um, I, I think it's, it's been super positive. We started doing stuff again in 2018 after shit, 12 years of doing really nothing. I didn't play guitar for like 10. Um, it hasn't turned into a negative or a burn of like, uh, yeah, this is better as a memory. Um, I think we're, we've got good stuff to do. We recorded back in November, our first new song that we've, we've written in since 2006. And there was like total apprehension, right? Where can we even do this? Or like, we're going to write some stupid ass song that (laughs) sucks. Like we're not creative anymore. Um, People are only creative from, you know, 15 to 25 when they're angsty and we're too comfortable. And the songs, in my opinion, sick. Like it's super, super good. Um, We'll be releasing that later this year. Uh, Can't give too many details on that, but I'd say if you're an audio karate fan and you're tired of these like, okay, unreleased record or that kind of shit, like, well, I want to hear some new music. It's, it's super good. I I think anyway, and I'm our harshest critic. Like I, I can't separate myself from like, Oh, that's whack. Or, Oh, no one wants to hear this. They could just listen to the old records because those are tried and true and good. Like, no, the song is objectively good and we're stoked. And, um, uh, I think we're going to keep trying to work on like an entirely new record because it felt good. It felt natural and it flowed and the good songs get written super easily, at least for our band. Like the ones we had to labor over, they ended up all right. But a song like Nintendo 89 was probably written in an hour or two. Like, oh, there's a riff and art starts humming a melody and it just fucking happens. And next thing you know, you're like, oh shit, it's done. And how, where did that come from? Like, why couldn't we do that the last six months we've been trying to write? It's like, cause it wasn't time. Like that was the day the stars aligned, the chemistry was good, whatever it, it happened. Um, yeah. So su- super cool to write new stuff. Um, cause it kind of gets old playing super old songs. Uh, you know, I, I, I wonder how Iron Maiden does it. I mean, I appreciate that they do it cause I love seeing Maiden and hearing fucking the trooper, But uh, I don't know, in another 10 years, while I still want to be playing the songs that are now almost 30 years old, maybe, I I don't know. But uh, it'll be fun to have some new stuff to play. It makes it exciting. Uh, A couple of things on that. One is when it comes to having new stuff to play and keep it exciting, that is perfectly, you know, absolutely what every band wants to do because it shows, you know, continual growth with it and especially with the songs that come just like, you know, you write some of your best songs in like an hour or two. It's because they're flowing so naturally and you guys are just on the same wavelength where it's just, you're hitting on every single aspect of that song. It's just flowing where you guys are all in the same mindset creatively. So when this all comes together, it just happens. And yeah, you know, you would have liked to have that happen earlier, but better to have that happen later than never have it happen at all. When it comes to playing, I'll say when it comes to playing some of the older songs though, I totally understand where you're coming from, where you don't want to play the same song as over and over and over and over again, because then it kind of diminishes, you know, your enjoyment of them. 
but with some of the older stuff as well, especially a song like Nintendo 89, you know, you're playing that and people are just getting amped up for it. You got to be able to look out the crowd, look at that energy and just feed off and just be like, yeah, this is awesome. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Right. Like at at the same time, if you don't play those songs, people are going to be like, man, they don't even play that song anymore. Fuck that. I'm not going to go see them again. Like they're playing all this stupid new stuff. I hate this. Like I want, I want the hits. Uh, I'm guilty of that. I went and saw Jimmy World last summer and uh, they're good because they've got a huge catalog these days. They don't mess around you. They just get on with the hits. Like they just deliver. Like I don't leave there going like, oh, that was cool. They played one song off Clarity. Oh, they played like, no, they just come and fucking here's the hits. Here's a couple new songs. Here's some more hits. Thank you, Jimmy World, we're out. And I love that. Like, I appreciate that. That's what I want. Um, I know that's kind of what people, audio karate fans want, right? Like, yeah, that's fine. You are you're ex- you guys are doing jazz fusion. Like, good for you, weirdos. Like, play the hits, right? Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll always deliver those. Uh, the one or two hits we've got, I think. I don't know if we could even call them hits, right? <laughs> I think Ariana Grande has hits. We've got uh, songs that a couple people like. <laughs> you can say they're hits, but I, I understand where you're coming from too because even I like that as well where it's, you know, if I'm going to see a band, like I want to see the songs that are going to get the crowd going. They're going to get the crowd absolutely riled up. And yeah, do play some new stuff as well because that's why you're out on the road. It's like you've got new stuff you want to play, play some of the new stuff, but don't give me all one or the other because if it's going to be a full-on nostalgia, if it's like, that's that's cool, but... You know, maybe throw some variety in there. You th- if you play just a bunch of new stuff, I'm going to be like, you know, where are the hits? And there are a couple of bands that I've seen recently, and uh, I'll, I'll throw Asking Alexandria in there, where they only play stuff off of their last three albums. They won't play anything off of their early work, like Stand Up and Scream. And it's like, that's what a lot of people like. So, come on, I want to hear some of that. However, I understand why they don't do anymore. So, I'm like, okay, you know, I got I to gotta, I gotta level with it because I'm just going to try and enjoy the show as much as possible. But if you get that healthy mix of, you know, the hits and some of the new stuff, Man, everyone's going to be happy, especially when the hits absolutely hit and the crowd goes nuts. Yeah, we had done a show, uh, the last show we did before the pandemic really ramped up and the shutdowns um, was with Rise Against. And I hadn't seen them in a long time. We we had done some touring with them in like 03 uh, and then some Warped Tour stuff around 03 and 04 with them. Um, so we've you know, known them for a while. And luckily like they play a bunch of stuff where i'm like oh cool they're still playing like the good the stuff i remember what Mm -hmm. i would consider the good shit right uh they put on such a good show and like you said healthy mix uh just pros dude those guys are such pros um it's cool i don't know uh you're what 27 i did yeah math okay yeah i don't know how we capture that audience right like (laughs) Cause it's, it's, it's a trip. There's so many new school, what I would consider new school bands. Right. Um, who it's weird. Like their fans don't know who they are, but there are so many bands where they're like, Oh dude, I grew up listening to you guys. Like I love you guys. And like a, a day to remember is one of those bands where I'm like, dude, you guys are like a fucking arena band. Like what's that even like? And they're like, Oh dude, Lady Melody is such a sick record. That's like one of my favorite records of all time. It's like, what? <laughs> cool like <laughs> hey can we can we play like can we play in the parking lot when you guys do your <laughs> arena tour or something right <laughs> um that's super cool but uh i you again you go back to the data like the demographics don't lie spotify tells you how old people are and how they identify and if you are a 33 to 42 year old male uh you probably like i <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see more like 20 to 25 year old females or, or something, but uh, <laughs> just widen it, the demographic a bit. Yeah. Right. Like, can we, can we vary this a bit? Um, but yeah, like what's, what's some new school stuff that should be on my radar, I guess is, is an appropriate question for you. Ooh. Well, well before I jump into that, cause you were talking about rise against and like with the healthy mix and I can easily verify that. Cause I saw them, four times last year rise against my favorite band of all time so when you start talking about them, i'm just like like i'm i'm perking up my ears uh when it comes to new stuff that you could be on the lookout for um when it comes to emo specifically and i'm gonna go emo on this yeah 
There's a band there. I believe they're based in Phoenix, Arizona right now. They're called First and Forever. First and Forever. Okay. I I I remember this was like in early 2021. They were putting they put out a brand new EP and I don't know how they did, but like the Instagram ad they put on, it's the only time I've ever actually like sat through an Instagram ad every time it came on because it was just so well done. And and then I'm like, I got to talk to this guy. I brought him on the podcast and I'm like, this guy is absolutely, this this is absolutely hysterical. Like this is awesome. And they're like, they're the sound of the sound is really emo, but it's more that like upbeat pop punk emo. And it's just, it just blew me away. Okay. First and foremost, first and forever, first and forever. Okay, first and forever out of Phoenix. Check yeah, that out. is that is definitely one I think that you should check out. For you had you him know, on the show. I'll, I've had him on the I've had him on the podcast before, and before we got started, because the guy is the lead singer's name's Alex. Uh, he was like, "Hey, I'm sorry, man. I only got like an hour because he was uh, getting ready. He was having a bunch of people over to watch an NHL playoff game because he's originally from Minnesota, is a Minnesota Wild fan. I went to school up in Minnesota at the university. Probably I started right as he was leaving." So we probably maybe even ran into each other at one point. I'm like, dude, you're playing, you're watching the wild play. Hell yeah. Cause I was wearing a, I probably was like wearing a wild shirt at that time too, or a Vikings. I don't even remember, but like, I'm like, this is freaking awesome. I still have yet to see him play live though. Ah, dude, they, you need to find a way to bring them out to Chicago or hell. Maybe we'll connect with them and they'll be like, Oh, my dad used to listen to audio karate. <laughs> sure. We'll, we'll do some shows with you guys. And uh, then bring that, catch- bring that my way. <laughs> yeah. Right. We, uh, <laughs> That's, it's just so much easier to connect with like bands uh, from sort of the, the era and the scene as us. Um, oh, that's that's cool that they're a huge Rise Against fan. Like, I hate bringing this stuff up because it starts to feel kind of name droppy. But like, so they did their a lot of their records at the Blasting Room mm-hmm. with in Colorado, and and we did a record there. Um, and when you do a Blasting Room record, you kind of get plugged into it's almost like a fraternity, dude of bands that have recorded there and you know our our descendants fans and uh sort of friends and family of bill um so that intersection is there but if you check out our record lady melody and even two of the songs on otra were done at the blasting room the production is very similar to to a rise against record where you're like okay like why does this sound familiar and that's sort of the secret sauce right you're like those drums sound big those guitars sound really good, and it's it's that kind of a thing. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff on Otra, man. I'm I'm super excited about it. Uh, we we don't get rich on audio karate, so this definitely isn't a like fuck it. Let's scrape together some songs and we'll sell them to people, and let's let's make some money so we could buy cocaine. It's definitely more a matter of um, the the songs are worthwhile and they're cool, and for either new fans or for our, our old fans, like this is something worth having. Like it's, it's career spanning and it's good. I love the bands like Smith's where you've got louder than bombs and their peel sessions and half full of hollow. So even though you have their proper records, they put out damn near everything they ever recorded. And you can really geek out on like, Oh, do you have the live version that they did on the BBC? Like they changed the bridge a little bit and it's cool. Or, um, I would like to do that for us if, if for no one else, but for me, right? Like I want to have that vinyl collection where I can listen to any song we ever recorded on vinyl. And, and it's just fun, man, to go from the planning of it'd be kind of cool to do this to fuck. There's the cover. There's, if you look back there. So that's, that was painted by hand by Chris Sherry. He, he's the artist that did that. Uh, it was like, Hmm, it'd be cool to work with Chris. Like he's a freaking punk rock art legend. And now, thankfully, with social media, you can reach out to anyone. They may not respond, right? But we hit them yeah. up like, hey, dude, would you commission a piece of us? Yeah. And then you, so there it is. Like, fuck, would you mind if we used it for an album cover? <laughs> no. So that ended up being the album cover with a couple tweaks. Um, it's so fun to just go from like, wouldn't it be cool to, there it is, a year later in your hand, it's tactile. Like, yeah, not only would it be cool, but we did it. And then how quickly the the returns are diminishing because it's like, okay, on to the next project. Like, what can we put out next? Like, can we do a split? Can we do an EP? Uh, Something. Like, I'm a weirdo like that. I always am chasing sort of the next project and pushing and prodding the guys to like, hey, let's do something different. Let's do whatever. And uh, 
if you guys ever listen to this, I don't know if they listen to these podcasts. I tend to do a lot of them. They probably don't. <laughs> uh, sorry, but I appreciate you guys. Thanks, Audio Karate, for always fucking going along with my half-wit ideas. I, I appreciate it. Well, a couple of things before we close this one out. First things first, as you said, that you recorded a couple of these in the blasting room, and you, uh, you're going to tell me that there's going to be a couple of things I'm going to be like, I'm going to feel the Rise Against vibes in them. Okay, yeah. you got me more excited for this record than I possibly could have ever gotten excited for this record for. So, I, I mean, my God, you mentioned that. I'm just like, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. like I'm excited for that. On top of that, too, it's like when it comes to doing like some like, you know, like a just a live session kind of thing, just seeing, you know, maybe some of the tweaks that you can put in there. Yeah, why not do it? Just do it for yourself if that's all, the, if, if that's just it, because I mean, it's it's audio karate. It's your guys's project. It's your guys's band. It's your guys's brotherhood doing this. So if you guys want to do it, even if it's just for yourselves, by God, go and do it. Enjoy it. Have fun doing it with each other. Just make the most out of it. You only get one life. So and you guys are living the way that you want to live life. Why not keep that going? One other thing is I have two other bands for you to kind of keep an eye on and check out for uh, that are starting to really rise in the ranks as well. I'm not sure if you heard of them. One is called Varsity. They spell it V R S T Y. It's like a post-hardcore and R&B mix. Okay. I'll and, check that out. And their lead singer has like, his his voice is like, he can do those unclean screams, but also is like, he can be really smooth and soothing, kind of like a Michael Jackson vibe. Oh, dude, that's, it's either going to be awesome or horrible, but you look stoked on it, dude, so I'll check it out. Oh, I'm, they just released a new album on January 21st, I believe. And it was like, it's, like I, I listened to it. I had him on the podcast where I'm like, this is this is fantastic. Like it's good. Another one is there's a band called Caskets. They're from England. They're a post hardcore band, and uh, the debut album they released in 2021 was one of my favorite albums from the whole entire year. It's they take that whole, it's they take that whole entire like post hardcore sound and take a very in depth and very deep meaning to their songs and just put them out there where it just seems like you know the depth is there but you fully understand the whole emotional toll that it takes to really go through something that they're talking about in that song. Um, hey, that sounds to me like a death tones. Like you hear what those dudes are doing. It's like, damn, this dude's kind of fucked up. Like this isn't just casual. Like there's that deep emotional connection to, to what they're singing. Half the time, I don't know what the hell art's singing about. Um, but I'm like, okay, this must mean something to you, dude. Cause this sounds fucking painful like okay cool Be better you than me no i'll check those out brother thank you for the for the suggestions you're very welcome and for everyone listening if you um another suggestion for everyone listening to listen to is audio karate if you haven't yet because well i'm telling you right now you should <laughs> yeah man it's uh there's a million free places you could get it but uh it's those are good tunes Otra will be out. Uh, street date is March 18th, so it'll be everywhere you stream. The records are up for pre-sale with uh, variants selling out. You could get those at Rev, uh, at The Hard Times, Brooklyn Vegan. Um, go to Iodine Recordings' website. But thank you so much for, for having me on, brother. Um, if you're in Los Angeles or Chula Vista, March 18th and 19th, we'll be in San Diego and L.A. Uh, doing some shows with Go Betty Go and Survival Guide, which is our buddy Emily aka agent m and uh, the rundown creeps those will be fun we'll see you guys on the east coast for some festivals later in the year and uh, we'll be in chicago at some point man like you can send me a, a hateful email if i end up welshing out on that okay all righty well I'll, I'll i'll end this podcast with three very specific things first things first you have ultra coming out on the street date of march 18th and you have your release shows that same weekend as well. Also, you know, everyone that's listening, you might not be following Audio Karate on social media. You might not be, you know, subscribed to anything on YouTube. You might not be subscribed to their stuff on and following their stuff, you know, on, you know, the streaming platforms. So why don't you go and do that? Because you're going to want to listen to Ultra. You're going to want to get into the album. You want to get into the band even more so because you're listening to 1089 and be like, oh my God, it was this band that put this out. <laughs> yes, now I'm going to invest in this because I remember this from like 2003, 2004. And you're going to have that like time warp moment back to that. So you're not going to want to miss out on it. And instead of having to like search everything up for yourself, I'm going to do you one better. Look at the links in the description of the podcast and say, find Audio Karate Online. So links, labels to social media accounts, YouTube, where you can buy the album, download the album, stream the album, where you can follow them on everywhere online. 
I will have that in the description for you. So you just to click on the link and hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button, whatever it might be. I'm taking care of all of it for you. So yeah, go and do it because I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, man, do it. Be fun. And now time for number two, Jason. So whenever I've guessed in the podcast, and I absolutely enjoy having the podcast. I always make a certain promise as a way of like to show appreciation and gratitude for, you know, you guys taking time to be on the podcast. And this has happened every single time I've had a guest on the podcast. And Jason, you are keeping this trend alive, good man. So my promise to you is this. Promise does not start with if. If implies possibility of not happening. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not how we're doing this. I started with when because it implies this is going to happen. Date and time to be determined. So when I get to see Audio Karate perform live for the first time, and if it's in Chicago, it might, uh, might probably be the best chance. And even if you don't make it there this year, you'll probably get an email from me or a message from me being like, you didn't make it this year. You can make it in 2023. Please, please, please. <laughs> so my promise to you is this, sir. And it can be edited in any way that needs to be edited. So my promise to you is when I get to see you perform live for the first time, first round's on me. Okay. I will take that first round and then I'll follow it up with two and, and reciprocate. Thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome, sir. And as we close this out, Jason, I cannot end this podcast in all good conscience by saying goodbye for a couple of reasons. One, I am making good in that promise and I am seeing you guys from live. Two, as time goes forward and maybe when that whole entire new song comes out that you guys are potentially work, working on, might be released later in the year, might have to have you back on here. We can talk all about it. That would be cool, dude. I would love that. Um, the B side of that split, I think people are going to be more excited for. It's a band who hasn't done anything in a long time, and they're a long beloved um, pop punk band and old friends of ours. So that's the only kind of Easter egg I'll drop, but it'll be cool. Thank you Ooh. so much, though. You're not going to want to miss out on that. So, on that note, I mean, again, want to make them that promise, want to have you back on the podcast, want to talk about more music with you. So, in all good conscience, this cannot be goodbye. Goodbye is way too final, Jason. Just see you later, bro. It is see you later, my man. All right, brother. Take care. Take care. Well, folks, that's been your Jason from the band Audio Karate. Once again, Audio Karate's got Ultra, their new album. Did I just roll my art? Holy crap, I finally rolled an art. Yeah! Out on March 18th, 2022. All links for the band's social so you can follow along with the band. And know when they're playing live in your area, whether it's the release show in California, whether it's some festival dates they got coming up yet to be announced. So you're going to want to know when they're announced. The best way to do that is to follow along with Audio Karate on social media. Watch YouTube videos. Go order the vinyl. Pre-order it, you know, because some of the variants have sold already. You're not going to want to miss out on it. You know, just get fully engraced into Audio Karate like you should have done a long time ago. All the links for social media, YouTube, streaming services, where you can buy some of the merch, where you can get some tickets, they're in the description of the podcast below. So make sure you go and do that. Also, follow along with the Court Progression Podcast as well. Make sure you follow along with us on uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Do a lot of crazy stuff on there. Always talk about the podcast, talk about music. Instagram is going to be where you're going to want to go for the most of it because we do IGT videos every single Tuesday talking about the podcast. Wednesday live streams where you guys can come on and just we talk and just have a great time talking about music. A lot of stuff like that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because you can watch the podcast videos on there as long as some of our other like crazy videos we've done as well over the course of the past three and a half years. You can stream the podcast audio-wise on Spivel Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Amazon. Link description below for that. Also, thank you to Phoenix Fitness and Cousin Views. Their links and their promo codes are in the description of the podcast as well. And I really hope that Jason and the band Audio Karate make it out to Chicago because, well, I know the Chicago crowd. Yes, I am from Milwaukee, but I travel down there a good amount of times for shows. And trust me, when Audio Karate comes, we're going to want to be there. I'm going to be there. You better be too. Let's have some fun. So on that note, that's going to be for you, everybody. Thank you for watching to the Core Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one of these videos. The big, healthy, and hearty. <sighs> See y'all!